Basically, for nickel, it's a lustrous, silvery white metal, and it was only discovered in 1751. So we're now comparing something that was discovered 7,000 years ago with something that was discovered 250 years ago. Chemical symbol is Ni, so when you see some of the, the, the subsequent slides, you'll see Ni, which is the chemical symbol for, for nickel. Very similar atomic weight to, to iron and atomic number. It actually sits almost next to iron or iron in, in the periodic table. Has a, uh, a melting point of 1400, relatively low thermal and electrical conductivities, high resistance to corrosion and oxidation, which are really the important issues for being an additive into, into steel production. Excellent strength, toughness at elevated temperatures, and it's capable of being magnetized. All of those things, when you add nickel to steel, to, to iron, sorry, make a very good product for very specific applications. It's a very attractive and durable metal um, and alloys readily with many other, th many other metals. So it occurs principally as oxides uh, in minerals around in the earth, uh, as sulphides and as silicates. Ores of nickel are mined in, in more than 20 countries and, the, and on all continents and are smelted or refined in about 25 different countries. Primary nickel is produced and used in the form of ferro-nickel, nickel oxides and other chemicals, uh, and sometimes uh, as basically pure nickel metal. It's also um, readily recyclable, uh, and, uh, and is scrap there is a significant market in scrap nickel. And you can see some examples of some nickel minerals there as well. Applications. Well, nickel is actually used in over 300,000 products uh, for consumer, industrial, military, transport, aerospace, marine, architectural applications. It's used in coins, and uh, a number of countries uh, are still using nickel in their coins. It's a very bright and durable electro, uh, electrolytically applied coating on steel to give you your, your nickel plating. And as an alloying metal, it's uh, along with chromium and other metals in, in the production of stainless steel and heat resistant steel. So there's a lot of, uh, of speciality applications um, by adding nickel to, to iron in the stainless steel process. Production for 2012 amounted to 2,100,000 2, tonnes. So an order of magnitude less quantity being mined around the world than iron ore. Um, and uh, you can see here a, a lot more variety in terms of production from a, around the world. There's no real clear dominant country here. When you look at Australia, Canada, Indonesia, Philippines, Russia, they're, they're all, you know, not too far away from each other. So there's no clear dominance in nickel as there was in, in um, iron ore. Uh, the production of reserves, uh, they, when you compare uh, reserves versus 2012 production, you can see that you've got of the order of um, you know, 30, 35 years of, of reserves um, based on US Ge United States Geological Survey statistics. Let's now look at the equivalent pricing for nickel in the last 30 years. You can see, uh, if you remember from iron ore, the first 20 to 25 years in iron ore were very flat. Nickel is a little bit more volatile, and we had a, a strong peak in 1987, 98, 99, died back down again, and then a huge, a huge leap um, in 2007, which was prior to the GFC, went down in the GFC, and then uh, went up again, and, and is currently in a bit of a a lull. If you look at the, the last five years in particular, um, you can see that it's gone from a low of something of the order of 10,000 um, US dollars per tonne up to a peak of 27, and that's over a period of uh, you know, less than two years. So uh, extremely volatile pricing as well. Uh, and so for those producers that came on board in uh, February 2011, uh, and then subsequently watched as the price halved, then um, you know, that's a fairly worrying um, statistic for them, and that's what they have to deal with in terms of their production scenarios. Quick question on the recycling mm -hmm. of the minerals, particularly your slide uh, where they've got um, zinc, nickel, um, where they've only got life of, um, remaining life of less than 20 years. How much recycling goes on in those two um, mineral metals? Um, for some of them, not as much recycling. What you'll often have is, is substitution going on. 
but just bear in mind that those figures are reserves. So there, um, for those of you that uh, understand this, you, you have all reserves and then you have mineral resources and then you have potential. So all reserves are those figures which the companies and the countries involved have the very high uh, expectations and very high confidence in those numbers. For many of those commodities, you can triple the reserves um, into resources and, and uh, exploration potential. So some of the, the commodities around the world at the moment might have reserves of less than 20 years, and so you might think, oh, okay, we're going to run out of those in 20 years. But in, in fact, underlying those reserves are very you know, significant amounts of mineral resources, which haven't yet been converted to reserves. And, and there's a lot of exploration going on to find additional materials. So don't be too concerned about the fact that you might be only seeing 20 years or less in terms of reserves. But it is a good indicator of when companies and, and industries who will then start looking for alternatives um, and substitutes. And you saw um, a significant, oh, it's probably more than 20 years ago now, significant substitution of tin when tin started to reach very high prices, uh, a lot of manufacturers looked at substitutes for tin, they found substitutes for tin, and the, and the production or, or the demand for tin reduced as a consequence of that. And, and various other commodities and metals go through the same process.